Item number SCP-2497. Index. Home for the Cactus Knights. Object class. Euclid. Special containment procedures. 785 SCP-2497 instances have been detained in Biological Containment Area 36 with hand-knit Christmas stockings. Foundation Spatial Analysts have been assigned to monitor known areas of activity for SCP-2497 manifestations. Should an instance appear, containment teams are to be deployed and a hand-knit Christmas stocking attached to the manifestation localizing the anomaly. Foundation personnel interacting with SCP-2497 are to avoid direct skin contact and should wear layered, puncture-proof gloves and protective gear. Should an accidental puncture wound occur, the punctured limb or appendage must be amputated within 30 minutes of the incident. Puncture wounds at non-amputatable sites result in termination of the exposed individual. All prepared or bottled beverages within a 10-meter radius of SCP-2497-1 instances are to be disposed of using standard sterilization techniques. SCP-2497-1 instances within Foundation custody are to be stored at least 10 meters away from all piping systems and liquid stocks. Description SCP-2497 are 785 identified Canigiaea gigantea, colloquially known as the Saguaro cactus, which have been anchored to local reality by attachment of hand-knit Christmas stockings. Containment teams discovered a stabilized SCP-2497 manifestation on... When an instance materialized in front of a fireplace, inadvertently pricking one of the stockings, when unanchored, SCP-2497 manifestations are subject to spatial instability, materializing and dematerializing in random locations across the southwest United States. Instances primarily appear in enclosed spaces, namely bathrooms, closets, and other small spaces. This appears to maximize the chance of sustaining a puncture wound. SCP-2497 is indistinguishable from non-anomalous Carnegie gigantea under normal biological conditions until its spines penetrate the epidermis of a human subject. SCP-2497's primary anomalous effects begin when a spine punctures the skin. Tissue surrounding the puncture wound will undergo rapid transformation into plasticine, as determined by spectroscopic analysis, resulting in loss of sensation in the affected area. This effect will then spread outwards from the affected region until either the limb or appendage is severed or the organism has been completely converted. Complete conversion takes roughly three hours and results in the creation of an SCP-2497-1 instance. SCP-2497-1 instances are promptly reshaped to resemble a standard synthetic Christmas tree sprouting the branches, and artificial pine needles. The legs are closed and fused together to form a central column from which the branches sprout. SCP-2497-1 instances remain conscious throughout their transformation and frequently manifest a number of fluorescent lights which they are able to control. These lights have been used for communication albeit at limited frequency due to the amount of energy required by each SCP-2497-1 instance to use them. See interview I-2497-1. SCP-2497's secondary anomalous effect begins upon complete manifestation of an SCP-2497-1 instance. Upon complete restructuring, all prepared or bottled beverages within a 10-meter radius of an SCP-2497-1 instance are converted into juice from the saguaro's fruit laced with Lovophora C, colloquially known as POT. Consumption of this fluid initiates a series of actions normally practiced during the American Christmas holiday, including Decoration of the instance with stereotypical ornaments and lights. Prolonged singing of Christmas carols while encircling it. 
expressing or showing regret at the absence of the individual used to create the SCP-2497-1 instance. Placement of wrapped gifts beneath it. Opening of said gifts on the following morning. Continuous consumption of the aforementioned fluid under the belief that it is eggnog. Actions induced by the fluid will cycle continuously until affected individuals are subjected to detoxification, available liquids run out, or they expire from chemical overdose. SCP-2497-1s appear to destabilize local reality through some unknown means, resulting in a higher frequency of SCP-2497 manifestations. This phenomenon resulted in an uptick of SCP-2497 manifestations at Biological Containment Area 36, from 2 in 2013 to 46 in 2014. Update 25-12-2014 SCP-2497-1-05 was observed responding to yes-no questions posed by staff working in Biological Containment Area 36's storage facility. The instance responded by blinking its lights once for yes and twice for no. SCP-2497-1-05 was presented with a photo of Dave Serling and confirmed its identity when questioned. When questioned if such actions required energy, SCP-2497-1-05 confirmed that it did indeed tire from frequent use of its fluorescent bulbs. Show interview log I-2497-1. The following interview utilizes letters and numbers attached to individual lights to answer more complex questions. Due to the taxing nature of such actions on SCP-2497-1-05, Interviews were kept short, and questions were kept simple. Interviewer Dr. Carrie Shawl Interviewee SCP-2497-1-05 Formerly Dave Selling, Accountant for And Forward The following interview consisted of short response questions where SCP-2497-1-05 had been equipped with letters numbers, and certain punctuation marks hanging from individual fluorescent lights. Dr. Shawl. Good morning, Dave. SCP-2497-1-05. Hello. Now that we have a more advanced method to ask you questions, do you think you can give us insight into what happened? Ready? Excellent. Can you tell me where you were when SCP-2497 appeared. Cactus. Yes, the cactus. Bathroom. What were you doing at the time? Toilet. Dr. Shawl pauses briefly. And where did the SCP-2497 instance appear? Below. Dr. Shawl pauses again. Okay, thank you, Dave. Do you know why SCP-2497 appears more frequently near you? Angry. Do you know why they are angry? Miss it. Could you be more specific? Christmas. See SCP-784. Tired. Okay, thank you for your cooperation, Dave. End interview log.